Hello and welcome to this video where we finally rebuilt the engine of the E34. Unfortunately, there will be a major issue as always with cars, so stay tuned. The first thing I'm gonna do is clean out the bores where the cylinder head bolts go into because there was probably some stuff or dust and whatever dropped into there. And if you don't clean them before talking down the head bolts, there is a risk of cracking the block. I'm just gonna use one of these brushes. These are usually used to clean um, sunroof drains, some WD-40, and then I'm gonna just blow it out with air. Because I don't trust the machine shop with the cylinder head, I'm also going to blow out all the water and oil passages from the head because I don't think they did that well enough or they didn't do it at all, so we're going to do it. Did you just see all of this flying out right there? There was so much metal flakes still stuck in there. After this, I am most definitely never ever going back to that specific machine shop again. Because it's one thing to make a fault, like they admitted to it and they repaired it, as we discussed in the last episode. But shipping out a cylinder head that has so many metal flakes in it, not just flakes or dust, like little chunks of metal. In the oil galleries it's gonna wipe out all the bearings, like literally. And in the water circuit it's gonna destroy the seals of the water pump, the water pump impeller if you're on plastic still, etc etc. That's just not serious. You cannot tell me that they did not clean the head. Like never ever again. So first things first, we're gonna install a new timing kit consisting of new chains, a new uh, chain guides and a new chain tensioner. These are the lower guides, the only plastic one goes here and the alloy reinforced one goes on the side with the tensioner. On this engine you have to install the crankshaft sprocket with the injection pump sprocket at the same time. Both of them are keyed with this little pointer right there and there is the same pointer on the crankshaft sprocket right there. These two pointers have to line up with the copper guides on the chain itself. These have to line up. I'm just gonna put a bit of oil on the guide retainers and drizzle a bit of oil in there so that everything is nice and looped on startup. This just clips into place right here and right here. Now I just have to press it on. That thing is now firmly in place. On the chain drive you can easily line it up with placing the copper guide at the spike of the wheel and then just putting it on from the top. That way it sits into the correct position. You know it's seated correctly when the center of the dot is exactly on the middle of the copper plate. You have to align it on the short side so the distance between the copper links is short and now with the crankshaft sprocket I'm just going to put the center right onto the copper link. And I'm just going to turn it up and now it's aligned. Now I can put that back on. Remember everything is keyed so it only goes in back one way. Because when we removed the timing chain, the chain was stretched a bit, it's not going to line up perfectly. So I have to readjust the timing pump. I'm going to loosen both knots at the rear of the housing. Now I'm just going to tap the pump with a rubber mallet 
just a tiny bit for it. I could not get the sprocket for the injection pump on at the first time, so I had to loosen both adjusting bolts at the back and then knock it with a rubber mallet so that it is now properly lined up. This is because the old chain was slightly stretched and the key that locks onto the sprocket was actually no longer lining up and I had to turn it that way and now I adjusted it to the middle of the long bores right at the back of the block as per the BMW TIS manual. Now I'm going to put back on the second uh, chain guide. Now I'm going to put back the tensioner itself. It is aligned with this dowel that goes right into the block and then there's just the two 10mm bolts. Aber im Video schneiden wir schon schauen, wie wir voll das. Ah, ist nicht schwer. Ein bisschen Video schneiden. Now that the tensioner is actually compressing the chain, we can torque the injection pump nut to 50 Newton meters. Now I'm going to put back the upper chain rail. Clip it in place. As I explained in the previous video, the timing case gasket is both for the timing case and the oil pump. So we have to cut it here, 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 here and here and here. And then we can put it on. Now I'm also going to put a tiny bit of gasket maker on the oil pan gasket and where the cover meets the block. Next up, we're reinstalling the climate brackets and the server pump bracket. I painted these brackets so they look really shiny and well. And I cleaned the hardware in the ultrasonic cleaner, which is also now oil and grease free. Now I'm also happy that I labeled all the screws and bolts, because otherwise I would not be able to put them back in the correct position because there's just too many. I don't have a specific torque for these bolts, I'm just going to snug them up until they bottom out and then it's good. Now I'm going to put back the actual climate compressor unit itself. I cleaned this in the car off camera, but with cleaning I mean I just sprayed brake clean onto it until it was fairly clean. But yeah, now we can mount it back into place. Now I just need to plug the electrical connector for the fan clutch back in. Before I uninstalled the climate compressor, I had to take out the ground wire to the chassis rail right here. And a thing I usually do on all the cars, and I suggest to you guys do it as well, is every time you're doing a bigger job like this on your engine, and you have easy access to them, make sure to take them out and just grind them down with a bit of sandpaper and do that with the actual nuts that connects to it as well. That way you're going to be sure that your ground has good connection and then you can take that out of the equation if you're having uh, starting problems because an older car it can be that the electricity or the electric system for the starter is not ground well and then your car won't start. I've seen it happen before and by doing this you can prevent it from happening and then you have this whole error search that you don't have to do. Now we have to do the same thing with the bracket for the hydraulic pump. Same thing, cleaned and painted bracket and cleaned hardware. Now I'm going to put the front bracket for the bracket for the servo pump back on if that makes sense because 
This triangular bracket mounts to the bracket for the servo pump and to the oil pan of the engine as a secondary support. To install this rear bracket, we first have to mount the actual servo pump with these two nuts so that we can put this on and just zap the four screws, uh, bolts in from the back. I'm sorry if this is a bit hard to watch, but it's also hard to do. And uh, yeah, there's not enough space for the both of us. Now I'm going to put back the alternator. This is also a very tedious task and I, for the life of me, won't understand who at BMW decided that these bolts have to be installed from the back where they're even less accessible. So, yeah. Now I'm going to put back the return line for the diesel, which we took off the episode prior. Gonna kind of slide that back on. And I'm gonna replace the retarded style clamp with a stainless steel hose clamp. In case you forgot about that bolt already, now we're gonna install the mounting bracket for the vibration damper with its massive bolt that gets torqued to 100 Newton, 60 degrees. 60 degrees and then 30 degrees again. Now we're going to install the sprocket itself. I dipped it in oil so it's easier to install and it's keyed so it only goes in one way. Now the bolt with the spacer. Now we're going to do the first step which is 100 newtons. Unfortunately, I don't have an angle wrench, so I'm just going to do this approximately. This is not the correct way to do it, but I'm working with what I've got and I'm just going to do it approximately. So, first 60 degrees. I think that was about 60. Just going to let it settle for a few seconds. Now the second 60. Ah, that was already a lot tighter. Damn, this is gonna be hard. And now the last 30 degrees. That was probably the hardest bolt I've ever installed in my entire life, but uh, everything went well, nothing broke, and now we can just throw back on the vibration damper. Now I'm going to put the actual vibration damper back on. Now we're going to fasten it with the six bolts that it came, but we have to add a bit of thread locker. I just looked up the torque spec for these bolts and they seem to only get 22 Newton meters, which is a little low, but uh, if TRS says that it's 22, it is 22. I'm gonna torque these in a star pattern. Another thing I'm quickly gonna do is put back the servo pump pulley. And it's also just three clean nuts and a clean pulley, all 13 mil. We'll talk this down once the serpentine belt is back on. I just loop the o-ring a tiny bit to aid installation and not damage it. Also make sure the mating surface is nice and clean for the o-ring to sit correctly. Water pump's going in. Now I'm just gonna push it in with the screws.
I don't have a torque for these because they are so tiny I'm just gonna snag them up and then turn them until they bottom out and that's all it gets because I don't want to snap them I'm not even gonna take a wrench I'm just gonna do it by hand now the adapter for the belt everything has been cleaned of course just gonna tighten them a bit and then once the belt is on I'm gonna tighten them fully Next up on the list, we're going to reinstall the turbocharger because once the head is on and the exhaust manifold is in place it's more difficult to do it and I'm just going to lay it down onto the foam and then we're going to gear all right. Um, the downpipe that is completely destroyed, I will be replacing it. I already got the replacement with the car. However, the car is not yet in the air and I'm just going to do that uh, somewhere along the lines. Now we can actually put the turbo back and we're going to start with the two most important things, oil feeds and oil return. Now we're going to install the turbo feed bolt. It delivers oil from the top and it is crush washed with two copper gaskets with the pipe in the middle. Oil comes out from these tiny holes right there and it bolts right into an oil gallery from the block. This ensures optimal flow to the turbo itself. One copper washer at the bottom, through the hose, second copper washer, and then we put it straight into the block. I put in that carton box to simulate approximately the position that the turbo is going to sit in so that we can torque down the oil feed line at the correct angle. BMW says that the oil feed bolt gets torqued to 25 newton meters, which seems a bit much. I ended up torquing it to 20 because 25 just seemed like something was going to break. Just for your information, I'm only putting on the downpipe because otherwise everything will just land here and then there will be smoke everywhere in the engine bay. It's dirty, I still have to clean it, but uh, at least that way the exhaust gases are going down. Now we'll prepare the belt tensioning arm with a new tensioner pulley and put a new idling pulley back onto the servo pump bracket. <clears throat> Since the tensioning arm is sitting on the height of the injection pump and there's a lot of oil being slung around I'm just gonna take the precautionary measure and put in a bit of thread sealant just to be sure. I'm gonna talk it down with this giant Imbus 17 Now we're going to put back a new idler pulley with a clean bolt. Since I also don't have torque specs for this, I'm just going to snug them up by hand, real good, and then we're fine. Both pulleys are turning again without making noises. In case you're wondering how bad the old pulleys were, those are metal pulleys and there is like I can feel a groove in the metal pulley. That's bad. And clearly a noise on the idler pulley. And the tensioner pulley was worse. But now that all the engine auxiliaries are back on the engine itself, we can proceed with reinstalling the head. But first, we have to actually prepare the head. So, new hydraulic lifters going in, proper camshaft going back in, and uh, everything has to be torqued down to spec. Glow plugs are going to be reinstalled, and temperature sensors. 
Now we're going to reinstall all three temperature sensors. This one we already reinstalled in the previous episode. I just put on a new copper washer. And these two were new. I just put in some copper washers instead of those weird aluminium washers that they deliver with the sensors. And before disassembling everything, I've taken a picture to be sure I put the uh, sensor where it belongs. So the green one goes there. Give it a good snug. Not too much though. We don't want to break anything. The one we installed in one of the previous episodes goes right here. That one is a size 21. And the last new one goes right here. Same with this. Nice and snug, but not too much. Now that we have prepped the intake side of the cylinder head with all glow plugs and sensors, now we can proceed with the internals of the cylinder head. I bought some new hydraulic lifters. I've let them marinate in oil overnight and now we can just drop them in onto the valve springs. It's probably going to be a messy task, so wear gloves. Now I'm going to proceed with taking out all cam caps so then I can put them aside and put the camshaft back in. Now we're going to put back the camshaft itself. However, we first need to loop everything up. I'm just going to pour some oil onto the bearing surfaces. Now I'm going to take the actual cam caps, dip them in oil, Dip, dip, dip. Everything is lubed and back with them. Also, going to drizzle a bit of oil on the camshaft before installing the cam caps. As per BMW TIS, the cam caps get torqued to 14 Newton meters from the inside to the outside. So everything is now torqued to spec, I'm just going to verify every single bolt. The cylinder head is now fully prepped to be reinstalled. As I explained before, on older cars you're supposed to renew the connections on the grounding wires and pretty much every electrical connection. And now I'm going to do the same thing I did to the ground strap, just to the starter motor. I just had to finagle the manifold back in place and now I'm going to put them back in with some cleaned hardware and some new gaskets. Now that we prepped the cylinder head with new gaskets on the exhaust side, we can proceed with the cylinder head reinstallation process. But first, we have to put a bit of gasket maker as per the repair manual right where the timing case here and here meets the block just a tiny dab I'm also going to put a tiny bit on the uh, water side because uh, it leaked from there before I bought the car when installing a new cylinder head gasket you have to make sure that absolutely every hole that's on the gasket or in the block is matching. I already checked it on this one, but if you bought the wrong hat gasket, for example, and the oil gallery port was blocked, you would start your engine and there would be no oil pressure getting to the cylinder head. Then your chain and your valve probably will get uh, erased because there's going to be so much wear on the items because of the lack of lubrication. So you have to check every single hole. I already did it on this one, so we're fine to proceed. 
Also, make sure that the alignment dowels, for me, one is stuck in the head, the other one is right here, are sitting correctly in place and are keeping the head gasket in place so that it is not, does not slip off during installation. Now that the hat is back in place, I'm just going to wiggle it and if it doesn't move, the dowels are aligned so it can no longer move for one millimeter, we're fine. Now I can finally install the last chain guide with this special bolt because I couldn't install it before because the mounting spot is in the cylinder hat and it has to push onto the spanner. I'm trying to get it recorded but it's going to be difficult. I looped the chain guide thoroughly and now I can put it in the correct position. Now I can tighten the retaining pin for the chain guide that we just installed. No torque for this, just nice and tight. Here we have a new set of head bolts. These are from Elring and of supposedly good quality. These have to go in slightly oiled. Before we're going to torque them down for good, I'm just going to turn them in all the way so that the head is sitting flush with the block and then I'm going to install the camshaft gear and turn the engine over two or four times by hand to verify that the timing is on and the valves are not going to have contact with the cylinders once we start it up. If you're doing a hat gasket job on the M51 engines and your chain is older than 20,000 kilometers you have to put in 5 mm of height on this side so to compensate for the stretch chain <coughs> I'm going to put in the new bolt because as I explained in a previous episode these are stretch bolts or torque to yield fasteners and have to be replaced after every single torquing Now I'm going to put the plug back in the hole where we just took out the retention pin with a new quash washer out of copper. Now I'm also going to put back in the pin for the upper timing rail. Just going to tighten it a tad bit, not too much though. I feel like that's enough. The camshaft sprocket bolt gets torqued to 20 newton meters. You have to torque it when the chain is completely tensioned. And then another 35 degrees. Uh, same as with the vibration damper, I don't have an angle wrench, so I'm just going to adjust it a bit more. I would say that's about 35 degrees, it's now fully tightened. Now I'm going to reinstall all the front bolts that I forgot to do last time. I have already taken out the cam locker, now I just need to go all the way to the back to the fly reel and take out uh, the pin. It's out. Now the timing is no longer locked in place which means if we turn the engine by hand right at the uh, crank pulley we shouldn't have anything holding us back except the compression. If we have something that has high resistance it means we timed the engine wrong and there is piston to valve clearance and I just cross my fingers that everything is right because uh, yeah then I have to redo the whole thing. It is also important to note that if you just turn two uh, crank turns the upper part is just going to turn one turn so I'm doing four turns just to be sure that everything is well I don't know how many turns that was probably like 10 <laughs> I just wanted to be extra safe now we can talk down the head bolts in case you're wondering yes when the head bolts are completely torqued down they do compress the head gasket a tiny bit, but I calculated it and the difference should be approximately 1.37 millimeters 
between the cylinder and the valve itself. So we should be safe, even if the head gasket compresses by 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.2 or 0 0.02, whatever millimeters, everything is still in spec and we're safe to proceed. Another thing I forgot to add is there are currently no injectors in any of the cylinders, so I was able to turn it really easily without compression. If you're doing this, take out the injectors or spark plugs because it just makes it a whole lot easier and you don't have to fight compression. Now I'm going to do the lengthy procedure of torquing all the cylinder head bowls. First step, 80 Newton meters jointing torque. Next step, turn them all back half a turn. Now the third step, 50 Newton meters jointing torque. Same sequence. I think the first 80 degrees and then the half turn loosening process is to pre-stretch the bolts so that you can get the correct measurement afterwards because after not even after probably a quarter turn the bolts were already fully loosened or pretty much fully loosened so uh, yeah now after the 50 newton meter step we can proceed with the first torque angle and the first torque angle is 90 degrees same with the other two stretch bolts I don't have an angle wrench, so I'm just going to do it approximately. To not miss out any bolts, I'm going to do a little dab right here on the wall from the cylinder head uh, for the bolts that I've already done so that I don't mistakenly do one twice or forget one. Now. After the first step, I'm going to clean off all the marks around the cylinder head wall. So that I don't get confused later on. Now on to step number 5. For the second time, 90 degrees torque angle. Same as before, I'm going to mark which bolts I already did with a paint marker. Because, believe it or not, we still have to do one last 90 degree step. Yep, this engine is a bit overkill, but uh, yeah, it's also insanely high compression, 22 to 1 bar, which is pretty much the highest diesel I've ever heard of. But yeah, there was pretty much a workout. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now we have to let the engine idle or get warm for around 25 minutes. I'm just going to do it uh, until it is warm and then we have to do one last 90 degree step. I have put some exhaust mounting paste on our new gasket and now I'm just going to place it on the turbo itself and hope it doesn't move. Now I can push the turbo in its position. And put the bolts back in. I think the first one already grabbed. That would be great news. And yep, it did. That's great. Now I can put the other two back in. These bolts get 50 Newton meters. Now I'm going to reinstall the belt tensioner and the bracket that goes with it. Our new belt is now installed. Now we can tighten down the missing bolts from the water pump and the servo pump. Furthermore, the belt trajectory on this engine is a bit weird, I agree. You have to go pretty much all around from the top and then between the crank pulley and the water pump there's the tensioner and between the alternator and the servo pump you have to go in uh, over the idler pulley. It's a bit weird but it gets the job done. If you are wondering why I'm not yet putting on the belt and the pulley for the climate unit, that's because I just want to wait with that until we know that the engine is fine for good and I'm not going to waste any time doing this, so yeah. Now we're going to install the water hose that sits right here. It mounts with two 10 mils. This o-ring specifically, I bought it new. However, this is not 
for the E34. This is for the BMW i3. This O-ring sits in a water cooler for uh, some drop-down case from the electric motor or whatever but it is the same thickness, same outer and inner diameter and the same wire strength. But uh, yeah, I just bought this because I could get this separately and for the water o-rings I would have had to buy six of them and I'm not just buying six uh, for three bucks each if I can just get this for 250 and uh, then I'm fine because the other o-rings I'm not going to use them anyways. I looked this up and this just mounts with a regular size 10 mil right here. Fairly easy. And now I'm gonna put this one single retainer for this one in. I just felt it bottom out, so I'm not gonna go any further, unlike the previous retard of an owner with his thermostat. And speaking of people that messed things up, I also don't trust the machine shop with the repair 100%. So I'm going to put in a bit of gasket maker just to be sure. I usually wouldn't do this, but in the situation I'm in, I don't want to have another coolant leak and I don't want to have to rebuild the engine a second time. And now, after having this fixed twice and some cunt destroying it in the first place, this is how you install a thermostat housing with a thermostat the right way. Just tighten all the bolts and look, bottoms out, fine, it's good. Bottoms out, fine, it's good. It bottoms out, fine. And that's how you leave it. You don't talk these down anymore. You're just gonna let it be. Those are 10 mils. They are super fragile. And if there's any leakage, just tighten them a bit more. That's just how you do it and you that way you cannot like break every single bolt. We're gonna finish hooking up the water system. I'm gonna start with the pipe that goes from this part on the cylinder head to this part right here on the secondary water pump. The second water hose gets installed on this pipe that we installed previously and goes all the way back to the heater core. Just gonna put it on, same with the other ones, hand tight and that's enough. I'm gonna install the vacuum pump, but first I'm gonna throw on a new seal because the old one is probably done. It's pretty much flat with the surface. Now I'm gonna put that back into place, you have to make sure that the clown clutch aligns with the wheel and this bolt goes right here. Since the second bolt goes all the way through to help the valve guide in stay in place, I'm just gonna put a bit of thread sealer on the threads because it is in contact with the oil. Make sure it aligns with the valve guide itself and then just turn it in. Because the six injectors are not yet on the cylinder head, I'm gonna hook up all glow plug electrical connectors and all three temperature sensors because now I have more space. We'll install all five normal injectors, except cylinder number four because that's the lead injector. While we're not installing this instantly, I'm gonna show you guys in an instant, but as of now, I'm just gonna sit them into place and torque them down to 65 newtons. The reason why I did not install the lead injector, the injector from cylinder number 4, instantly, is because the machine shop destroyed it. They broke the wires right here, they weren't broken off, but the protection was broken, so I put it back on, or I held it back in place with some 2K glue, that's gonna be strong. But on the top, they completely mangled it, like, they broke it off. Um, now I'm gonna cut it off here and I'm gonna try to re-solder it in the hopes of repairing it. Now I'm gonna cut back the insulation a tiny bit. Now same over here. Gonna chop that off. 
I actually wanted to solder it, but the wires are literally the same, so there's no way of me knowing if I'm right or wrong. So the most logical step to do is use those crimps and then I can just switch them around if the engine ends up not running. And then I can exclude that as a possible error. Now we can install this mangled injector as well. Now I'm going to put back the valve cover. I repainted it so it looks brand spanking new. Just look at the result, it is so fucking clean. You cannot tell me that this does not look beautiful. That, some nice OEM looking silver. If you rebuild an engine and it's going into a car, make it look OEM. Red and all those flashy colors, it just doesn't fit. Now I'm gonna put all the bolts back except the back one because once I have the water reservoir back in place I can no longer easily access it and since this needs to come off for the final torque there's no way in putting it back really. Cleaned oil cap going back. Before I'm putting back the water tank right there I'm gonna check a pipe right there that comes from the radiator at the front as an overflow hose. I've seen a video where it was on a gas V8, but still, this pipe right here was blocked with crud and I don't know what, and the overflow function was no longer given. So I'm quickly gonna blow it out with compressed air. This one is now guaranteed free. I'm quickly going to put back the water expansion tank. There's just two plastic 10 mils. It goes in right there, sitting in place. And now the clamp to the big hose that connects the entire water system, a water tank. Since I also wanted to replace all four O-rings for the oil cooler, I already replaced the two on the oil filter housing side in the last episode. Now I'm gonna take out the two from the oil cooler. Make sure to take these out because you might miss them since they're already squished in right there. So, the two new ones, I'll put them on inside the car onto the oil cooler lines. I dipped these two in oil and now I can put them back onto the lines. Before putting the radiator pack back in, you have to slide in the oil cooler from the driver's side into the plastic bit that's made for that. And then on the other side, you have to slide it in at the same time. It's gonna be a bit tricky. I will put the radiator pack back into place. Now I'm gonna reinstall the retention bracket for both O-lines. Now I'm going to fill up the rest of the cooling system, mix some more coolant in another container. The water reservoir is now filled and now I can try and get some air bubbles out of the system by pressing on all the various hoses to hopefully squeeze out a bit of air. Great, just need to install the battery and then we're ready for hopefully the first working startup. I'm just quickly going to check if there are any leaks and then we can start. I bought some all new intake manifold gaskets. I've seen a guy working on a TD or TDS, so I don't remember. He just used chip paper and gasket maker and it was like standing out all the way to the size and I was like Tell me you're cheap without actually telling me you're cheap. Now I'm going to put the two mounting brackets for the intake manifold onto the oil filter housing. If you're wondering which one goes where because there are two, the front one has a little notch right here to plug in a plastic clip that is holding on a vacuum line and that one goes to the front. If you are wondering what clip I was talking about earlier, this is it. 
This one just goes like that. Clip, and that's just the plastic clip that is supposed to do, I don't know what. It's a bit useless, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep it there. <laughs> While well, making sure not to damage anything in the way.